Star Wars spaceships are just that spaceships, and they really don't have any need for aerodynamic performance. But even so, it's not infrequently that we see these ships operating in atmospheric conditions. So this is a relevant question to ask. What sort of resistance do these ships encounter while moving through the air? And that's what's called drag coefficient, which is expressed by a number. Simply put, the smaller the number, the lower the resistance. For a little bit of reference, a cube has a drag coefficient of about 1, a sphere 0.47, and a teardrop shape about 0.04. Now, I'm heavily simplifying things, and admittedly, I'm not really a math guy, and I'm letting the software do basically everything for me, so take this all with a grain of salt. This is entertainment about fictional vehicles. Anyway, we just have to start with the X-Wing. It has a drag coefficient of 0.45, so it's slightly better than the 0.47 of a sphere, which at first might sound good, and I guess it's by no means terrible, but it's actually similar to the resistance experienced by some of the more boxy automobiles. Jeeps, for instance, tend to occupy this range, and they're not exactly built for flight. So if we're using spheres as a benchmark of actually not that great, it's no surprise that a TIE fighter with its spherical cockpit doesn't do so well. It's got a drag coefficient of 0.98, over twice that of an X-Wing. 0.98 is only slightly better than a cube, which means that a TIE fighter is basically a flying brick. And naturally, the next thought is, well, what about the TIE interceptor? It's supposed to be faster than the TIE fighter, and I wonder if that, in part, could be applied to its atmospheric performance as well, if it had a more aerodynamic wing configuration. And indeed, the interceptor comes in with a drag coefficient of 0.78, which is noticeably better than the TIE fighter, but it's still basically got the aerodynamics of a cube with one of its edges pointed forward. And looking at the profiles of these ships, that largely checks out. What's funny to me is that the TIE Interceptor is still thoroughly outclassed by even the Y-Wing, which by all appearances really has nothing going for it from an aerodynamic standpoint. But it comes in at 0.68, which is not good. But still, it's interesting that the ship we're told is the most sluggish rebel fighter still has less drag than what is allegedly the most nimble Imperial fighter, though it's important to recognize that the source material does depict the Y-Wing as a capable dogfighter. But is there anything in Star Wars with good aerodynamics? And while pondering that, I thought of the ARC-170, which should give us a nice point of comparison with its successor, the X-Wing. The ARC-170 borrows heavily from real-life aircraft, like the P-61 Black Widow, and even retains the ailerons on the wings, which I'm not sure I've seen on any other Star Wars vehicle. Consequently, the ARC-170 manages to have better aerodynamic engineering than the X-Wing, but really not that much better. It has a drag coefficient of 0.39, which is comparable to something like a PT Cruiser or even the Cybertruck, interestingly enough. And while this is the best number we've seen so far, the real P-61 that the ARC-170 is based on has a drag coefficient of 0.024. But wait, what about the A-Wing, the sleekest and most nimble Rebel Starfighter? The A-Wing is yet another Star Wars ship that borrows from real-world aircraft, deriving its fuselage shape from the F-14 Tomcat, and it definitely does favors for the A-Wing, which clocks in around 0.17. That's over two and a half times better than the X-Wing, and over five and a half times better than the TIE Fighter, and it's comparable to aerodynamic cars in the real world. But we're talking about flying machines here, and it's still pitiful compared to the real F-14, which I'm led to believe is about five and a half times better than the A-Wing, in the ballpark of 0.03, with a bit of wiggle room in either direction because it has variable wing orientation. So it's not looking great for the aerodynamics of Star Wars fighters, but I wanted to give Star Wars the best possible chance. So I plugged in the N1 Starfighter, which I figured was probably the absolute absolute most aerodynamic Star Wars fighter, and its drag coefficient was still 0.1 definitely the lowest number of them all, but still way worse than real-life aircraft. So what makes Star Wars ships generally such aerodynamic disasters, even the sleeker-looking ones? Generally, Star Wars ships tend to have abrupt aft ends. In aerodynamics, the back of an object is every bit as important as the front, since a large and turbulent wake increases drag. Basically, you want to rejoin the airflow as smoothly as possible, that's why a teardrop shape is so aerodynamic. So the aerodynamics of a lot of these ships could be vastly improved by simply tapering their aft ends down a bit. 
Now, the Naboo Starfighter is a different issue. It's theoretically got a great taper going, but in the world of aerodynamics, it's possible to be too sleek, where an overly sharp leading edge can essentially split the air apart faster than it can properly and smoothly flow around the object, causing extreme pressure differences that introduce extra drag. I think something similar could be happening with the N1 Starfighter, and this abruptly protruding astromech droid isn't doing it any favors either. We could do this all day, but that's just a brief little foray into Star Wars aerodynamics. Of course, this is all 100% irrelevant in space, but I'd say we do see these ships in the atmosphere frequently enough to justify a discussion like this. Some of you might notice that this is actually a remake of an older video that I posted some six years ago, but it got accidentally deleted back when my channel was experiencing some technical difficulties, and I thought it was high time to bring it back with some new narration. I might do this with some other old videos if you guys would like to see that. Anyway, I hope you all had a great time, and I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.